Hey YouTube, uh, Conflux Games here. Uh, welcome to video 8 of In Exilium uh, Development Progress, uh, our RPG type game we're making. Uh, the past couple weeks, uh, I've still been trying to remake a lot of the features that uh, I previously had, um, and in the process, trying to improve the design and kind of optimize uh, when necessary uh, some of the things and make some of the things more flexible when necessary also. Um, basically learning from what I had done uh, before and trying to improve many uh, aspects of the game as I'm kind of redeveloping them here. Um, Alright, well, let's dive right in. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the character creation screen here. Uh, first off, I added kind of a new font here that supports uh, lowercase letters. It's kind of a little change, but the font that I had before didn't support lowercase letters, and that's that's kind of silly, so um, changed the font to uh, be able to support lowercase letters um, and kind of made everything a little brighter, so hopefully it's a little easier to see. What's going on here? All right, let's go ahead and make our character. So we'll name him Player once again. Um, we'll just kind of randomize him, get something like there we go. I like kind of those flashy looking colors. Um, and we'll go ahead and create him. All right, so now we're in the game, and here's our guy. You can see that he. He has uh, all the characteristics that we created in our create character screen. Um, <clears throat> so first off, uh, I've got the all the weapon equipping and armor equipping back up and running uh, and working in the GUI. So pick up kind of weapons here and we'll pick up the full kind of leather armor set here. Um, go to here, our inventory. All right, so we can see we have all these icons uh, in all of the slots corresponding in our character right here. We can double click and equip uh, certain uh, equipments and it will show up over here on our guy. So we can kind of fully equip him here. That's what our guy's going to look like. Give him a big sword or kind of give him the two little swords there. Um, all right, so that's our guy and he mirrors uh, down here. Uh, also, I have the uh, stats screen basically up and running, kind of give the basic information for your character, uh, level, experience, um, and then a place for you to, once you level up, you get upgrade points and be able to up, uh, upgrade here. Let's uh, kill one of these guys real quick and show off a little bit of that. Um, Alright, so I leveled up once there, I got three upgrade points, so I'll be able to upgrade my strength, uh, plus three, set the points, all right. So that's all working and stuff again. Uh, now the next thing that uh, I implemented was kind of a tooltip display for the description. I'm doing it slightly differently than I did before. Before I had it so you, once when you were holding uh, item, that's when the description displayed. But now I have it as kind of a tooltip so you hover your mouse over the item um, and it'll show kind of the information about it up there. Uh, it works for equipment, um, and it works for another newly implemented feature, the skills. So we can see here that I uh, have recreated some of the basic skill uh, functionality. Here we have three skills. We have Fireball, Energy Bolt, and Fire Field. Um, so I kind of changed around how the skills operated. Um, before I was using somewhat, uh, I guess what's called a game object pool um, for the skills. And basically the idea behind that is that instead of creating the skill effects and stuff every single time you cast a spell, you have everything pre-created and then when you cast uh, the skill, it uh, basically just moves it to the location that you want it to be and then turns on all the particle effects or all that sort of stuff and just kind of activates it, lets it play out, then it deactivates it and recycles it back into uh, the game object pool. Now, the benefits of that are um, that you're, you're using a lot less processing power to create... Um, your skills, uh, you don't have to instantiate and destroy, garbage collection doesn't have to come in and pick it up every time, and so that's what really attracted to me to that system in the first place, um, but after playing around with it and after kind of thinking about where the direction of this game might go, um, 
I opted to actually leave it as an instantiate system um, because I wanted uh, the skills to have recharge uh, times and s stuff like that. And when you're using a game object pool, unless you have multiple instances of uh, the skills basically created and ready to go, um, you, you cannot have a recharge rate um, that doesn't correspond directly to how long the skill is actually active. I don't know if I worded that well. Basically, if I'm using the game object pool and I have this fireball skill here, for example, um, when I cast it, I will not be able to recast the skill, use the skill again, unless it is deactivated. Um, so that's not a problem for something like fireball. I guess I, I could shoot it off and then you just can't cast fireball until it kind of disappears and goes back down. Um, but for longer skills like this firefield skill here, um, I would not be able to cast that again until it's, uh, it had been removed. So you can only have one instance of a skill active at a time. Um, a way to get around that using the game object pool system is to just have multiple instances of the skills in the game object pool, but that can get, I mean, if you have eight skills here, to have multiple instances of all eight skills basically already ready to go just seemed like more game objects that I needed to have in this, uh, more game objects in the scene than I really wanted or needed to have. Um, and so I just decided since this game's being designed for PC, uh, for uh, desktop computers, um, there, the processing power needed to instantiate a skill every now and then is not going to bear down my system at all. Now, if I were developing on a mobile device, I would, I would definitely consider, uh, developing a system that would be more conducive to higher performance, um, or performance savings. But in this case, I think it's all right. And it allows me a lot more flexibility to be able to have kind of a recharge rate and stuff. As you can see, how uh, the skills working now we have this uh, the kind of the the skill indicator which will show where the skill will affect um, and then if it's the active skill you will see down here um, that there is a green uh, green rectangle uh, gr green kind of indicator around which skill is active and then when you cast it it turns red and kind of darkens out the skill until it's ready to be cast again. So, for example, this guy here will cast him. Now I can't, I can't cast him, but as soon as he becomes active again, I can cast another, uh, another firefield skill. So I can, I mean, the timing uh, of these, this skill is such that it, I can't really necessarily get two out at the same time, anyways. But um, for skills that will take longer to recharge, I'll be able to have multiple of those skills out at the same time. Um, all right, well, that's about uh, all I have to show um, so far. I just got some skills and stuff working. Um, next, uh, The next couple weeks, I plan on kind of ironing out all the weapon and armor attributes, uh, getting some bows and staffs and all the ratios and stuff working. All that stuff's not quite working right now. Um, I'll also be trying to get some uh, better implemented AI enemies than I had last time. The AI was okay last uh, last time, but it was pretty glitchy and pretty. Uh, there were there were quite a bit of problems, so I'm gonna really try to clean out and make it really just kind of clean and simple AI um, for some some basic enemies. Um, also, uh, I've been talking about uh, releasing a demo for the last uh, the last couple of videos. I've mentioned it, um, and just wanted to kind of shed some light on kind of the roadmap for what I have uh, planned. Um, to do for the next couple months, uh, next few months uh, for this project. Um, basically, my goal is for this is I want to get uh, this game right now to a point where there's actually something to play. So to right now, there isn't really anything to play. Yeah, we can cast some skills and do some stuff, but we can't really do anything. Um, I was almost at that point in the previous, uh, my previous kind of iteration of this, but because I'm basically redoing almost everything, I, uh, I'm starting all over from scratch, kind of, um, so I have to get back up to that level where you can get, you can actually kind of play uh, something. Um, from there, I want to create a kind of demo environment and demo scene that will be able to be very, it's very modularized, so I'll be able to add and remove components and stuff really easily. Um, 
the reason for this is is because I want to be able to release the demo uh, at a very kind of simple basic state so that players can start playing it um, whenever they want uh, and just kind of get an idea for how uh, the game works and then as I'm developing stuff I'll be able to kind of push updates um, to to the players um, and just kind of keep a very iterative very kind of active process going on so that people playing the game can you know get new updates uh, quite frequently and be able to check out the new features and give me feedback and so on and so forth um, so that's so uh, creating this kind of basic demo scene is the first step after getting this game to a point where something to play. Uh, the next step is to completely kind of redesign uh, the website that I have right now. It's basically garbage. It's uh, I haven't put a lot of time into it at all. There's nothing you can really do. The information on there is not really valid. Um, so I want to create a website or basically an online environment that's very conducive for players to get game easily get uh, updates to the game be able to give uh, feedback be able to get information about the game and about complex games and so on and so forth and just some maybe some other projects are working on just make it a kind of really easy environment put a form up there for people to ask questions to post defects um, and create some sort of way for me to be able to kind of just push rapid updates to players so that they can continuously be um, uh, updated as to what's going on. Um, so after that, then it's uh, time to start adding the new features and pushing updates. Uh, and then once I get to a point where I have enough features to make a full game, um, start designing and implementing that. Um, so that's that's kind of the plan for the next few months, just to give uh, people who are watching this an idea. Uh, during this time, I'll continue to post uh, the biweekly development progress videos, uh, keep you guys as up to date as possible. Uh, when the website's remade, it will be a lot easier to do that. Um, and I guess that's uh, that's about all I have uh, for today, guys. So uh, please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe down below. Um, and I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.